Hi, have you had a haircut? Many of my friends in the Philippines haven't had a haircut for over two months now because of the, they've been quarantined, they've been locked down. But let me tell you what happened to me when I had my haircut today. This is Tom Lara and I'm just sharing. Today, after six weeks of not having had a haircut, I went to my barber and had one. My barber's born in Iran and he knows I come from the Philippines. So as he started to cut my hair, we started talking about what's happening in Iran due to COVID-19. And I also started to share with him what's happening in the Philippines due to COVID-19. But as he was cutting my hair, he came out with this comment. He said, there's not much hair left on the top, is it? And I just smiled at him because I've noticed that myself. And I said to him, yeah, I noticed that. Then he said this, he said, but there's still a lot of hair on the sides and the back. Now, I don't know what he was thinking when he said that, but maybe he was thinking soon this guy won't need a haircut. At the rate that his hair is receding, there won't be much to cut. And it was after that, after that comment, when I felt this tiny voice say to me, sin is like your hair. Sin is like your hair. You see, I had been praying the whole morning about what to share with you today. And so that got me thinking and praying about what that tiny voice said. And so I started praying and saying, Lord, why is sin like my hair? What do you mean? by sin is like my hair. And as I was reflecting, this is what came to me. <clears throat> the first thing that came to me was this, that sin grows. Sin grows. Sin is like my hair because it keeps growing. It will get longer. If, if I don't take it to the barber, then it will keep growing longer. And that's what happens when I don't have a haircut. It will keep growing longer. In the same way when you, that when your hair grows long and you, you take it to a barber, when we sin, we need to take it to our Savior. Because if not, sin grows. Sin grows. Remember the story of King David and Bathsheba? David committed adultery when he slept with Bathsheba. Bathsheba was the wife of Uriah. And then when he found out that Bathsheba was pregnant, rather than cut off the sin, he orchestrates the killing of Uriah. Hey, sin grows. It grows when you don't cut it off. When we don't cut it off, sin will continue to grow. So ask yourself this question, when was the last time you received the sacrament of reconciliation? When was the last time that you confessed that sin? Is there sin in your life right now? The second thing that came to my mind is that sin can be colored. Sin can be colored. Sin is like your hair because you can color your hair at any time. Nowadays, you have so many choices of color for your hair. And in the same way, we can also color our sin. What do I mean by coloring our sin? We color our sin, one, when we make excuses for our sin. When we say things like, I did it because everyone else is doing it. We color our sin and make excuses. We color our sin when we deny the seriousness of our sin. When we deny the seriousness of our sin. When we say things like, it's just a white lie. It's, it's really coloring the sin. Hey, whether it's white, red, or blue, it's still a sin. And then we also color our sin when we blame others for our sin. Remember what Adam said to God? 
He said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. So rather than admit and confess that he had sinned by eating from the tree of the, of the, of the knowledge of good and evil, what did Adam do? He blamed Eve, but not only Eve. Think about it. He was blaming God because he said the very first words he said was, the woman you put here with me, it's your fault. You put this woman in here for, with me. So we call her our sin when we blame others for our sin. The third thing that came to me from that tiny voice was this, that sin has consequences. Do you know that when you don't cut your hair, it dies after a time? According to medical doctor Mehmet Oz, he says this, the strands of hair on your head grows approximately half an inch per month and, an, and have an average lifespan of two to six years. And after that, it dies. In the same way, the Bible says the consequences of sin is death. What's the consequence of sin? Sin damages our relationships. It damages our relationship first with God. Because there is no way that a good and loving God can accept sin. Hey, he will love you, but he will not accept the sin that you committed. Sin also damages our relationship with others. It damages our relationship with others. And so, so we have to be very careful because otherwise it will damage our relationships. Sin also robs us of our joy. It robs us of our joy. You see, when you sin, you think that there is no consequence, but the reality is that deep inside, it's robbing you of your joy. And not only of your joy, sin also robs you of your peace. You'll never be at peace if you're living in sin. So hey, when was the last time you confessed your sin? If there's sin in your life right now, can I encourage you to go and confess your sin and be reconciled with God? And if you can't go to the sacrament of reconciliation right now, just say a simple prayer asking God to forgive you of your sin. And then promise Him that when you have the opportunity, when the doors are opened again, when this lockdown is finished, you will go to the sacrament of reconciliation. I pray that this helps you and I pray it has spoken to your heart and I pray that you will cut out sin from your life if there is sin in your life right now. Let me pray for you now. Heavenly Father, I pray for every person who's watching this video right now and I pray, Lord God, that you would reveal to them Reveal to them, Lord God, any sin that they may have committed, any sin that they may have been coloring. And Father, I pray that you would just give them the power and the strength to seek reconciliation, to confess their sin, and to ask you, Lord, for your forgiveness. And Lord, I pray for all of their needs. I pray that you would minister to them, Lord God, and that you would minister to all of their needs. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. And again, I invite you to just put some comments either on YouTube or on Facebook and let me know if this has helped you. And also follow me. Follow me on Facebook and on YouTube. God bless you and have a wonderful day.